Along with their registration over the weekend, the candidates submitted their official pledges to the Korean National Election Commission. Our Kim Seong gives us the rundown of the top promises of the five major nominees. It would be worthwhile for voters to go over each of the 10 pledges, but for those who don't have the time, let's quickly go over the number one pledge of each of the five main presidential candidates affiliated with the political party. Some of them may overlap, but looking at each candidate's number one priority could give us a hint about the focus and direction of the state affairs of the next administration for the coming five years. Following the order in which they're listed by the National Election Commission, first off is Moon Jae-in, the former leader of the Democratic Party of Korea. He says his number one pledge is to create new jobs, particularly in sectors related to public health, welfare, nursing, firefighting, and law enforcement, as well as those related to tech development and the so-called Fourth Industrial Revolution. To do that, Moon says he will set up a new committee dedicated to the Fourth Industrial Revolution and spend a combined 2.9 billion U.S. dollars a year for the creation of new jobs. The top pledge by Hong Junpyo of the Conservative Liberty Korea Party emphasizes the country's defense against increased threats from North Korea and says he'll make sure the deployment of THAAD is complete by the end of June. The former Gyeongsangnam-do province governor says he will work with the U.S. to redeploy American tactical nuclear weapons to the country, which were withdrawn in 1991 as a deterrence measure. The top pledge from An Chur-su, the co-founder of the minor opposition People's Party, is also focused on defense and increasing diplomatic efforts to deal with provocations and threats from North Korea. In comparison to Hong, though, An says he will work to make the Korean Peninsula a nuclear-free zone while resuming multilateral security-related discussions, including the six-party denuclearization talks. To do that, An says he will increase annual defense spending to 3 percent of the country's GDP. This means the country will need to raise an additional $8.8 .8 billion over the next five years for defense. Meanwhile, the top pledge by Yoo Seung-min from the splinter conservative Padem Party concerns reform of the labor sector in terms of work-life balance, which he sees as necessary to tackle the social economic issues stemming from chronic low birth rates and a rapidly aging society. Yu says he will increase the period of parental leave for all workers to three years from the current one year and limit late night work or work related contact after hours. Yu says he will double the amount of state child support, which, depending on the age of the child, is currently a maximum of $176 a month. Last but not least, Shim Sang Dung, the presidential hopeful from the minor left wing Justice Party. Her top pledge is focused on political reform to end political divisions by region by introducing a new electoral system. She says the country should adopt the partyless proportional representation system, which distributes parliamentary seats to political parties in proportion to the results of all votes cast in the election. That would get rid of the current system, in which voters have two votes, one for their single member district and another for a party. You can check out the rest of the candidates' pledges and more on the National Election Commission website. The pledges were submitted right after the first televised debate among the five candidates conducted last Thursday, which saw fiery exchanges from the frontrunners Moon Jae-in and An Cher Su. At least four more televised debates are scheduled in the run-up to the election on May 9th, with the next one scheduled for Wednesday. Kim Ji-yeon, Arirang News.